Hello, fellow NFT haters. Today we're gonna to be discussing the ambivalent return of Cosmo Demon Painter Conoco. August 15th, 2023, my friend Frank sent me an unusual post from a website called jobtribe.playmining.com. This post said four different illustrations drawn by Cosmo Conoco has become NFTs and will be available via job tribes. I was shocked, by the way. Actually, no, I wasn't because when he sent this, I was playing Baldur's Gate 3. So I wasn't really looking until I noticed an unusually high amount of ads on Discord. So I decided to check Twitter. This is probably the saddest day of my life. <laughs> uh, Mega Tennis holding L's. Of course, I was very happy because, well, new Cosmoconic are in 2023. What had bro been up to? Possible interview? We recently got word that Cozy Panama Papers Okada was doing all right both financially and uh, in the idea that he's not actually dead. So naturally this whole thing had a glimmer of a silver lining involved. At this point, I was naturally curious about what Job Tribes even was because as far as I could tell, it was just a very ugly looking NFT game. Well, here's what I found. The basis of Job Tribes is that you're playing as a man, Rio Nito, who finds that after a certain incident, he's taken to the world of Job Tribes, which is a very fun mobile game that he plays apparently. There, jobs exist as gods, and people who control those job lords battle each other in this fantasy world. Through his adventures with a mysterious girl named Celica, and other unique friends, and many job lords, Nito discovers his destiny, and the hidden mysteries of that world. That would be the most interesting and innovative Izekai that I've ever read, if that wasn't for the fact that Izekai is like an oversaturated genre. This unique tale was written by Shin Kibayashi, who was involved in the new Kendaichi Files, Drop of the Gods, and sadly, one of the few manga that I actually read when I was a teenager, uh, Get Backers. He wrote that under the pen name Yuya Aoki. He also wrote the Fire Emblem game Fire Emblem Fates alongside Yukinori Kirijima and Nami Kumuro. Interestingly, Job Traps is based on the best-selling book, Japan's Salary and Occupation Illustrated Encyclopedia, and it apparently sold over 360,000 copies. Honestly, the idea that what amounts to a very generic, terribly boring looking game being inspired by a book is just all kinds of funny, but not haha -ha funny. The statement for the game is that they want people to deepen their understanding of various occupations and to respect each other's jobs through playing the game. Altruism at its finest. I simply feel compelled to applaud. Just imagine I applauded right there. Okay, well that's all well and good, but how do you play? Deep coin is the money system for the game. There's also a secondary currency called pale coin. Essentially, you can get a lot of pale coin and trade it in for deep coin. Deep coin is worth real money, by the way. Not much real money, according to this chart. So there's a battle system. Job Tribes is essentially a trading card battle system where you have six cards, but you use three per like run. Essentially what you're doing is trading blows using a rock, paper, scissors, or elemental system, if you want to call it that. You summon job lords and Essentially, there's a budget system, which is how you do things. Think of a, think of budget as action points, and you basically go back and forth. I didn't really think the whole time I was playing. I just kind of pushed buttons, and I would always win. There was also this thing where at the start of the battles, when you're selecting which jobs to use, it tells you if the job is going to be effective against the enemy's jobs, so it's not really that big of a deal. So there's many ways to actually get new jobs, by the way. You could either pay real world money, you could get a lot of pale coin, trade it in for deep coin, and then do it that way. You could also make jobs using like in-game items you pick, but you require to collect a lot of those to be able to do that. But if let's say you had a very good job, a very high-end rare job, you could actually trade that or let someone borrow it for a bit. That way they can use it to grind and you get the benefits. And then if you're a good person, you actually get to pay them and then everybody gets to be happy. Now, trading card games usually have really good PvP, but this game doesn't really have PvP just yet. It's something that they're working on, though they did have little tournaments in 2021 and 2022. And it's so funny to look at the exclusive NFT prizes from those tournaments. Knowing that this art sits among the greats like Cosmoconico and Yoshitaka Amano is amazing to me. Oh, 
I actually neglected to mention that this game has a lot of notable artists contributing designs. Most of them are people who were probably very famous in the 70s, 80s, or even early 90s, but they're not that big. So you're not going to see Demon Slayer guy or Chain Slaughter Man in this game, at least not right now. Because I am thorough, I decided to play the game. And I've played tons of terrible games before, like the 13th month, which is by far one of the worst things I've ever experienced. I've also played Elden Ring, so I'm not a stranger to boring, repetitive gameplay. I started the game and there's a few modes, the story mode, which you get to play as Ryu. There's also one called free mode, which is you playing as yourself, but it's the same thing basically. Literally, you play someone who died, and your favorite game was Job Tribe, so you're in the world of Job Tribes. It's literally the same as the story mode, but it's not real. I don't know why it exists. They function exactly the same. There's a lot of menus on the main menu, and it's really confusing. I wouldn't recommend looking at these. I couldn't figure out where to go for the most part except for those two game modes. I talked a little bit about the battles and the battle system is very simple. All you have to do is rock, paper, scissors. Just remember one beats the other and you also get told which thing is useful so you know what to do without actually having to think. The different jobs also work on a rarity system which is what all gacha basically run on. So like anything from common to I believe legendary is the rarest thing. Anyway, we got to talk about the actual like point of this, this video. I didn't make this video for no reason. Let's look at the Conoco NFTs. Conoco's NFTs were available via presale at 80 of each card. The cards being Alice, the Demon Creator, Jabberwocky, and Mad Hatter. What makes it funnier and more deranged is that after you buy what's called a premium recruitment ticket, which if you're familiar with gacha games, it's just the gacha for this game. This is actually kind of easier to do. After those 80 exclusive, there was the other 920 cards of each that remain. Alice and Demon Creator were the highest ranked, which is a legendary. Jabberwocky and Mad Hatter are like the second highest tier, which is called Epic. Their rates were super insane. During the event, buying the 50-ish dollar premium summon ticket thing, you get a chance to pull the Demon Creator or Alice, or Dental Assistant or Veterinarian or Firefighter, aircraft mechanic, prison guard, or midwife. No, those aren't other cards designed by Conoco, by the way, they're just other jobs. That's a pretty small gacha pool, actually, so it's not terrible. The Jabberwocky and Mad Hatter were in a similarly small pool of about nine total cards. The summon ticket lets you pull three, and that means three epic or three legendary. So that's for 50, you have a pretty good chance of getting one of those. So let's talk a little bit about the design of the cards themselves. The Demon Creator was based on Kaneko at first, but just drawing himself wouldn't be that interesting according to Kaneko, so he drew a rather comely old man. He is sitting on a strange chair that denotes that he is a peculiar fellow. There is a demon behind him, but this is a monster that turns into what other people see. So here he appears as a demon. If the story ever like actually continued, Kaneko would give that demon a major supporting role. In Lewis Carroll's story, the adventures begin with Alice following the rabbit and falling down a hole. So, Kaneko made her go to a school with a rabbit motif, which is why the school emblem features one. Also, in order to allude to the hardships that she'll go through, Kaneko drew her surrounded by the characters that she would be meeting along the way. By the way, her school name roughly translates to White Rabbit School. The Mad Hatter has very little thought put into his design. Kaneko just says, Truth be told, all he does is organize tea parties, but that would be quite boring, so I made him completely mad. I gave him a straight jacket that makes him look like he just escaped from somewhere and I gave him an ax he got from some victim. Jabberwocky is an original design because in the actual Alice books, they're not given a proper description. Kaneko decided to include aspects that alluded to the story and came up with a grotesque looking dragon with some insectoid characteristics. And if you're curious as to which of the four cards is his favorite, the answer is actually none of them. <laughs> his favorite character he drew was the Cheshire Cat he drew that's in like the card right here. But also going back to the whole large summoning pool thing, 
After the event, I believe the remainder of the conical cards just enter that super large pool of legendary and epic pools, so good luck getting the remainder. Speaking of getting them, did you know the most expensive NFT in the game is now Alice as drawn by Cosmoconico? Yeah, that NFT goes for around 900,000 deep coin, which when translated to real American dollar reviews is about $800. I've taken so long in making this video by the way that it's actually going for a little bit more, about a thousand dollar reviews. Though the rare card that I neglected to mention was the last card variant of the Cosmoconico Demon Creator. This is a single quote unquote signed NFT. This is the demon creator and the guy who pulled it managed to sell it for about $1,700, which is a very amusing. All of this is super cringe to me because frankly, the game is mediocre and it's gadget trash. The idea of the NFTs is stupid to me and the game is super duper predatory. And I can't express how much the people who play it do not care about the art or the artists. When I joined the official Discord server, it's relatively dead. I sifted through the content searching for Kaneko to be mentioned in all of the languages and there was a grand total of like five Kaneko posts. Three were people complaining about the error of the original Kaneko event post announcement, which basically just claimed a different number of like summoning pool thing and people had trouble summoning them. And one of them is me asking if anyone was excited about the Kaneko NFTs. And the other was someone replying to me saying yes. <laughs> so who is this game even for? Well, like all NFT related content, it's just for people who want to make money. The most common interaction I saw on the Discord were people complaining about not being paid for the weird rental scheme they have for the, you got good card, well here, grind away and then I'll give you some of the, some of the benefits. Apparently a lot of people experience this trouble where someone who actually rented out their NFT didn't pay the person who spent all that time grinding. And if you tried to ask for any of the game like mods or anyone to, to help, they are very insistent that they don't do that sort of thing and you'll get banned. So, so people don't care for the art and I think that's a little sad because Kaneko is not some hopeful old geezer who didn't know any better. To promote the game and the collab, Kaneko broke out of the flower field fans insist he's hiding in to drop the worst Kaneko interview. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously asked what are these NFT games in the first place, and after listening to the details, I realized these are games where you can earn money while playing. That actually made me more interested. As someone who draws for a living, I thought NFTs sounded charming, but I had no idea how they worked. So after giving careful thought to the way they were created, registered and sold, I figured the timing was just right. So now he admits to not really understanding NFTs until the pitch. I'm a firm believer in doing any research when signing contracts, and I think that Kaneko is also a pretty good researcher, so he did that much at least. He goes on to say, I was given four aspects to focus on. Job Tribe's theme is a god that controls industry. So it's not an anthropomorphization, but a deification. The producer told me that out of the four illustrations he wanted, one of them would be based on the demon artist theme because Cosmo Conico is the demon artist after all. That was the starting point. I have drawn a lot of gods and demons over the years, so I had to rack my brain in order to choose the characters I wanted to draw. This time I settled on one story featuring the people and demons Alice meets during her trials and adventures while wandering in demon land. I gotta say the footage of Kaneko is super odd. The audio is some of the worst audio I've ever heard recorded in modern day. To the point it made me think that this was probably AI generated. Cosmo Kaneko has this weird rocking back and forth thing he's doing and he's bowing his head a lot. And that's super weird to me too because if you look at his old video interviews, he kind of exudes a calm, cool, collected, confident persona. Pun intended. But here he reminds me of those overly eager anime guys who get way too excited about something. Mildly positive. Also odd is this art has to be colored by Kaneko's longtime collaborator, Megumi Shireishi, but she's not even mentioned. And that's really weird to me because he was pretty insistent on giving her credit where credit is due. 
All in all, I hope Kaneko is happy adding this dark blemish to his career. Joining the far-right and nationalist war crime denier Kazunari Suzuki, the has written bad games before Tadashi Satomi, and Panama Papers Kozi Okada. Sure, not all those things have the same weight on the grand scale of criminal behavior, but all of them are deranged. Funny enough, shortly after this collab was announced, we got official word that NFTs, by and large, are quickly becoming worthless aside from a scant few. And I guess the Kaneko NFTs account for some of those scant few. And that's it! NFTs are cringe and I got called a tourist by talking about this on Twitter. Because, heaven forbid, an artist like myself and a critical person of dumb things dislike a scam that takes advantage of poor people and desperate people and has caused nothing but terrible damage to the planet for no good reason beyond the scam and making the rich richer and making buying computer parts ridiculous for about a year. Anyway, goodbye, fellow megatennists.